Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Josh Vandere on Ansible for Network Automation. Today we're talking about variables and folder structures. Let's get to it. At the end of the session, you'll have reviewed a common folder structure that we're going to use within Ansible. We're going to understand where you can define variables for use in Ansible from the all.yaml file, the group underscore vars folder, host vars folder, or importing variables from another file. They all are important for possible input. And then we're going to also take a look at accessing variables from other devices. So you may have gathered something on one, one play for one device and you want to take a look at it on another device. We'll take a look at that. So first, let's take a look at the directory structure that's on the Ansible documentation page here. At the very top, we have our production and staging inventory files that they reference. So these inventory files are there for, you can have your production environment and your staging environment. So you put your inventories for production in the prod and staging in the stage, and then you can use the same playbooks in the stage and prod environment. That's a key benefit to Ansible here. Then as we continue down, we're going to have two folders, a group vars, which will correspond to groups and inventories, and host vars, which then correspond to particular hosts within the inventory. Inventories. That's a very key importance to variable inheritance, and we'll take a look a little bit deeper at that as well. We've got our library, module utilities, filter plugins, a few more advanced folders that we'll kind of gloss over here, and you can take a look at those a little bit more in the future. And then we keep on going down, and the last folder that we call out is the roles. So if you make your own custom roles, you want to make sure to have those imported into their own folder structures. So that way, you keep things in a relatively clean place. All right. Let's take a look at directory structures and variable inheritance. Here we are at the screen. We're going to take a look at a playbook that I've put together to demo this for you. It's a pretty simple playbook. We're having a single play that we're taking a look at inheritance and a single task. All we're going to do is looking at DNS servers. The debug that we're going to print out here is the IP name server is item. And we're going to loop over a variable that we have in various places named DNS servers. So that's going to be the playbook that we work with. And we're delegating this to a local host because we don't need to connect to any devices for us to work on this. The first file we're going to take a look at to get more information from is our group vars slash all.yaml. The all.yaml file here is a special file name that gets applied to all hosts. So when we take a look at it here, it's a YAML file. So it starts with a dash, dash, dash on top. And then we have DNS underscore servers. This is going to be the variable that we're going to reference. And as we work through the inheritance model, this is the fallback, the default. So if nowhere else is set, this is the only place where we're going to see the quad nine DNS server of 9999. So we'll go ahead and quit that and then we'll run our playbook right now i've got a few other files that i've commented out the items but we'll take a look at it a little bit more we're going to demo the inheritance here and as we take a look for the border router router one two three and four they all have the name server set to 9999 before we go further that just confirms everything is on the default 9999 server on the all let's take a look at the groups that we're going to use for this particular set up as well. So we're going to take a look at the inventory file. On the inventory file, we've got our all. Then we've got our data center routers, where we've got our border router, router one, two, and three. And then we've got router four that's hanging out as our remote routers. So we'll take a look at those a little bit more. First thing we're going to do is we're going to update the file in the host vars folder. So anything that shows up in the host vars folder should have a name that corresponds with the inventory file. So we've got in there, we've got router-1.yaml. So if I want to have some variables that are for router2, router3, router4, etc., or anything else, you put the host name in there, .yaml. We take a look here. I've got the YAML files, so it begins with that. But we're going to change and uncomment out the DNS servers. So here we're going to set the DNS server for router 1 to 4.4.2.2. So let's go ahead and save that and then rerun our playbook again. So as we go through, now we take a look. We've got router one that now has 4.4.2.2. So that's how you take care of things on an individual by individual host basis. The big catch then here is the other folder that we kind of got a glimpse of, of the group vars. Within the group vars, you can do things based on the group names that you've got. So again, data center underscore routers corresponds to the inventory group, data center underscore routers, in a dot YAML. Here, we're going to go ahead and set to two different DNS servers to 1.1.1 and 8.8.8.8. And so let's take a look at what that looks like then. Run the playbook again. And this time, 
Now we've got a few extra in there. So with border router one, we've got a couple DNS servers of 1.1.1.1 and 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Notice I did not take on anything. Router four, our remote router, still has no other DNS server set. There's no file in the host bars and they're not part of the data center group. So they still have the name server of 9999, which falls back to the all.yaml file. Next piece I'm looking to show you here is how do we include files that we have other information in. So as we take a look at the tree here, we've got various files. We've got our Ansible config file that I'm doing here. We've got a demo that I'm going to show you right about now here shortly. Then in this files directory, we've got this vlines.yaml. That's going to contain some more information that we wish to only pertain once. You could put that in some group bars perhaps or anywhere else, but we're going to just go ahead and include these files. So let's go ahead and take a look at the demo of the include. Here's what the playbook really looks like. At the first play, we have task number one. We're going to get variables from file in the files directory. So we've got the files directory that we've called slash vlans.yaml, and that's done with the module include vars. Then we're going to go ahead and take a look in that file. There's, there's a key in there that has vlans. Let's take a look at the file as well. So in here, we've got one key, VLANs, and then we've got some values that are more expanded here. We've got name for users and VLAN ID is two. We've got our phones on VLAN three and our servers on VLAN 100. We'll take a look at that on this one. We're just really showing how to include it. And then we're gonna take and expand upon that in the future sessions here. So when we take a look at doing an Ansible playbook on this, Now we run the playbook. Now each one of the hosts that you go through, we're running this again on router one, two, three, four, but each one of them then has their own representation of VLANs. So we've got the name that shows up there of users, VLAN ID of two, and then phones three and servers 100. We'll take a look what we can do with that in a future piece here. All right, this is gonna be a little bit more of an advanced topic that we're gonna take a look at. We're gonna take a look at how do we access another host variable? So let's say I'm router four, and I want to take something from router one. So this might come in handy if you're looking to do some ACL controls or something else of that nature that involves knowing about other devices information. So we've got this playbook that I've gone ahead and created that is going to be taking a look at this. We've got two tasks that we're going to print out the IP name server, similar to what we've seen earlier. In task one, we're going to take a look at the DNS service and we're going to take a look at our DNS service. This, so this is going to be the one for router four. Even though we want to have every host get the information, we only want to see this on router four. So that's where I've got the when statement. It kind of helps to hide some of the other information and this will really help to get the point across. Task two then, we're going to take a look at using router one's DNS servers on router four. So again, router four doesn't have anything else. It doesn't have a host var, it doesn't have a group var, and so it falls back to the all.yaml information. So let's take a look at running this playbook here. As we execute task one, we skip a whole bunch of all the other ones and what they've gathered. In router four, we fall back again to the all.yaml 99999. Task two, we're doing basically the exact same thing, except for this time, we actually do have the name server IP name dash server 4.2.2 matching up exactly like router one. Hope that helps at some point in the future. It is something that is very rarely used, but it was something that has come up a couple times on some forums that I've seen. And I have actually looked to use that in the past and so want to make sure that I armed you with the information here. To wrap up and review what we've accomplished here today, we've taken a look at a common folder structure for use with Ansible. Take a look at the Ansible docs for the page specifically on the current recommendation on how to structure your folders. And then we've covered where you can define variables for use within Ansible. The all.yaml file, which is your catch-all that all hosts will connect to. A group vars if you want to get more specific and catch a data center or a set of remote sites that you get to find in your inventory file with the group vars folder. If you want to have a very specific thing, such as a different syslog server because you're doing a proof of concept at a site, or you wish to take some advanced analytics somewhere so you change some variables for one particular site, that's a great place for you to put this in the host vars folder. And then we took a look at importing variables from another file. And lastly, we're going to take a look at the accessing variables from other devices. So how do you connect from router one? How do you get the IP address for router two, etc.?